Hello everyone. Greetings to you all in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I believe you're doing good. Welcome to another episode of Prophetic Time. I believe these videos are blessing you and helping you to come more closer to God. And those who are watching me for the first time, this is Evans Francis from Nagpur, India. I am an evangelist into full-time ministry from last 15 years. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, do subscribe, hit the bell icon. So whenever I come live, I share a video or a post, a dream from the Lord, a vision from the Lord, you or a message from the Lord, you will be notified. And in today's message, we are going to see the story of uh, Lot. And uh, we will see how judgment came upon Sodom and Gomorrah and we'll learn a lot of things, a lot of revelations uh, you will be able to, God will give you to understand your life better in a proper way. So without wasting a lot of time, let us pray and dive into the word of God. Father God, we come to thy presence in this wonderful time, Master. Lord, we come to your throne of grace. Thank you for all the good things you have done in our life. Lord, I give today's video into thy hand, your children into thy hand. I give myself into thy hand, Lord. Give me your wisdom and knowledge, strength and courage to share your word in its context, Master. No plan of the devil, no plan of the evil one prevail, Master. I cancel all the disturbances in the name of Jesus. You speak to your children today, Master. And Lord, uh, let this message be a transforming message, a life-changing life message, one lifetime message, Master in for them master and lord no plan of the devil prevail master lord help them to receive this word master and lord may this seed become a plant and a tree and may it bring fruits in their life master lord you're doing it for that i thank you in jesus precious name we pray amen 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 when we study lot in the bible he was the grandson of uh, terah and he was a son of Haran and nephew of Abraham. And when we read Genesis chapter 11 verses 27 to 31, there we can see the family of Terah. And, uh, and it says, this is the account of Terah's family. Terah was the father of Abraham, Nahor and Haran. And Haran was the father of Lot. But Haran died in Ur of the Chaldeans. The, the land of his birth, while his father Terah was still living. Meanwhile, Abraham and Nahor both married. The name of Abraham's wife was Sarai, and uh, the name of Nahor's wife was uh, Milcah. Milcah and her sister Isaac were daughters of Nahor's brother Haran. But Sarai was unable to become pregnant and had no children. One day, Terah looked, took his son Abraham, Abraham his daughter-in-law Sarai, his son Abraham's wife, and his grandson Lot, his son Haran's child, and moved away from Ur of the Chaldeans. He was headed for the land of Canaan, but they stopped at Haran and settled there. And when we read Genesis chapter 12 verses 1 to 5, there we can see the call of Abraham. And here we can see that Lot goes with Abraham to Canaan. It says, The Lord said, Lord had said to Abraham, Leave your native country, your relatives and your father's family, and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous, and you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who will bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. All the families on earth will be blessed through you. So Abraham departed as the Lord had instructed, and Lot went with him. Abraham was 75 years old when he left Haran. He took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, and all his wealth, his livestock, and all the people he had taken into his household at Haran, and headed for the land of Canaan when they arrived in Canaan. Remember, beloved, that when we see the life of Lot, and God spoke to Abraham, you know, God didn't say, take Lot with you, but uh, Lot and Abraham decided that we will stay together. When we read Genesis chapter 19, and you know, it is supposed to serve us as an example to us 
of what we need to do in in this life to escape the judgment of god uh, there's nobody in this entire city of sodom that actually measures up to any sort of standard or righteousness uh, when we study the life of uh, lord we don't see anywhere that uh, he is a righteous person but only we consider him righteous because when we read second peter chapter 2 verses 7 and 8 uh, it says but god also rescued lot out of sodom because he was a righteous man who was sick of the shameful immorality of the wicked people around him yes lot was a righteous man who was tormented in his soul by the wickedness he saw and heard day after day so here peter is saying that lot was uh, lot was righteous uh, but when we study when we study the word of god and when we study the life of lot uh, and when we go through it you will also see that there is nothing uh, there is nothing righteous about him but why god considers him as righteous uh, because uh, there abraham was interceding for lot and his family remember we are sinners uh, it's because of jesus who intercedes for us uh, we have the righteousness of god in our life and when god looks at us you know he sees jesus in us we see the he see the righteousness of of jesus in our lives uh, remember when we read uh, uh, genesis chapter 19 verses 1 to 29 the passage is actually characterized by certain times of the day it is broken down by certain times of the day you know when we read verse 1 it says that evening the two angels came to the entrance of the city of sodom when we read verse 4 it says but before they retired for the night uh, when we read uh, verse 15 it says at dawn the next morning the angels become insistent uh, and when we read uh, verse 23 we see it's written lot reached the village as the sun was rising remember that in this account here the events that you are seeing it has taken place in less than 24 hours uh, remember but we are going to uh, divide it into two sections it's simply the division of night and morning the things that are done in darkness and the things that are done in the light uh, and when you look at verses 1 to 14 you will see the evil deeds done in the dead of night uh, and when you look at verse 15 to 29 you see the righteousness of god in broad daylight uh, remember it is the intention of moses as he records this to bring that out to us that the deeds that the men of sodom are committing they deliberately wait until uh, until cover of darkness uh, to do them and they know that their deeds are evil and they were trying to hide them out uh, but remember our god does not do any of his action at night uh, god waits until the sun comes up and everybody can see it taking place uh, but the question arises why the lord revealed his judgment to abraham in chapter 18 you know he revealed uh, his uh, judgment to abraham so that he could proclaim it to the nations uh, so that he could teach it to his children so that they would walk in obedience uh, so that they would wo- not walk in unrighteousness but that they would walk in the way that's pleasing to the lord uh, when we uh, when we read genesis chapter 19 verses 1 and 2 uh, it says that evening the angels came angels came to the entrance of the city of sodom and lot was sitting there and when he saw them he stood up to meet them when he welcomed them and bowed with his face to the ground my lords he said come to my house to wash your feet and be my guest for the night uh, you may then get up early in the morning and maybe and be on your way again oh no they replied we'll just spend the night out here in the city square you know 
uh, now here we can see in the verse 1 that it says the two angels came to Sodom in the evening by the time they had left Abraham there in Hebron under the oak of Mamre the sun had started to set uh, and they came to Sodom in the evening and Lot was sitting in the gate uh, of Sodom Remember when we read Genesis chapter 13 verses 1 to 13 there we can see uh, that how Lot and uh, Abraham got uh, separated. Uh, it says, So Abraham left uh, Egypt and traveled north into the Negev along with his wife and Lot and all that they owned. Uh, Abraham was very rich in livestock, silver and gold from the Negev. They continued traveling by stages towards Bethel and they pitched their tents between Bethel and Ai. When they had camped before, this was the same place where Abraham had built the altar and there he worshipped the Lord again. Lot, who was traveling with Abraham, had also become very wealthy with flocks and sheep and goats, herds of cattle and many tents. Uh, but the Lord could not support both, uh, but that land could not support bo both uh, Abraham and Lot with all their flocks and herds living so close together. So disputes broke out uh, between the herdsmen of Abraham and Lot. At that time, Canaanite and Perizzites were also living in the land. Uh, finally, Abraham said to Lot, Let's not allow this conflict to come between us or our herdsmen. After all, we are close relatives. The whole countryside is open to you. Take your choice of any section of the land you want and we will separate. Uh, if you want the land to the left, then I'll take the land on the right. If you prefer the land on the right, then I'll go to the left. Uh, <coughs> Lot looked uh, a long look at the fertile plains of the Jordan Valley in the direction of Zoar. The whole area was well watered everywhere like the garden of the Lord or the beautiful land of Egypt. This was before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot chose for himself the whole Jordan Valley to the east of them. He went there with his flock and servants uh, and parted company with his uh, uncle Abraham. So Abraham settled in the land of Canaan and Lot moved his tent to the place near Sodom and settled among the cities uh, of the plain. But the people of this area were extremely wicked and consistently sinning against the Lord. Uh, remember here you can see that Lot and Abraham, their herdsmen began to argue with one another because they were both, uh, they were both shepherding in abundance. Uh, but what is important is that the question comes is why is he going to Sodom? Why he is going down to the valley? Because he is going down to the valley because there is plenty of past pastures. Uh, there is plenty of fresh waters to take care of his herds. Uh, remember many times these things take place in our life. We always look at the things uh, uh, physically that it looks good. The place is good. Uh, the people are good. Uh, it looks very good from the outside. But later when we go there, we understand that it's not a good place. Uh, but here already Lot has... Uh, separated from Abraham and he decided to stay in Sodom Gomorrah but uh, where do we see them see him there at the beginning of chapter 9 he lot is living an an urban life he's living in the city and he is not actually shepherding he's sitting in the gates of the city that's the that's where judgments would have been handed out uh, that's where city leaders would have been sitting and it seems that Lot saw himself as a leader in the city or maybe the inhabitants of Sodom viewed him as a leader in the city. In fact, uh, uh, he came to the city with much possessions uh, and remember a lot of time, a lot of time that's all it takes to be a leader in the city.
but when we see the life of lot he has actually diminished uh, in the amount of blessing that he once had uh, let me ask you why did he diminish in the amount of blessing that he was enjoying the answer is simple because he left abraham's uh, presence uh, beloved god brings certain people in our lives uh, who have uh, a special hand of god upon their life and it is very very important that you be with those families you be with those people and as long as you are in touch with them you will experience the favor and blessings of god in your life uh, but the moment you separate from those godly people the moment you separate yourself from such uh, families what will happen is that you start to lack in your life and you start to experience uh, drought in your life uh, there are people who walk with the lord and the anointing in their life the, it flows uh, through other people who come in touch with them so it is very important uh, when god connects you with a person who is godly who is god fearing and you can see the hand of god upon that person don't leave that person be with that person and so then you will experience is the mighty hand of god working in your life also lot of people in india i can say they have uh, here you can see that uh, lot uh, is look going to uh, towards the valley of jordan because he looks good uh, and uh, but uh, you know when we see the first chapter of 19 chapter we can see he is sitting in the city we don't see any sheep over there no goats and everything everything has diminished uh, but remember what i mean to say is that many people they start uh, in their life to uh, to go to certain place a certain country if like saying I, i'm going to america for doing the god's work as if in america there are no preachers available but the people go there because they want to hell settle their life they want to enjoy the life over there and they have no burden for soul but they say i will go there and evangelize uh, but what about india what about your country what about your city what about your state remember we are born if you are born in a place god wants you to win that place so that is uh, very very important uh, remember when we read genesis chapter 1 and 2 there we see that lot offers uh, these angels uh, the same that offers that abraham does in chapter 18 and in 18 chapter it's very clear that abraham had found favor in their sight uh, and abraham had found favor in the sight of the lord but look when we look at uh, how they responded to lot's offer they said no we'll just spend out here in the city we'll spend our uh, spend the night out here in the city square uh, why did they respond that way to lot uh, he doesn't seem to have found favor in the sight immediately but he pressed on <coughs> excuse me <coughs> excuse me so when we read uh, Genesis chapter 19 verse 3 it says but lot insisted so at last they went home with him lot prepared a feast for them complete with fresh bread made without yeast and they ate uh, when we read verse 4 it says but before they retired for the night uh, all the men of sodom young and old came from all over the city and surrounded the place uh, what's being expressed to us here at this point that there is nobody in the entire city of sodom that actually measures up uh, to any sort of standard of righteousness uh, lot is the only one that has shown this visitors any kind of righteous hospitality but other than that lot Uh, there is uh, not a single righteous person in the sit- entire city when we read uh, genesis chapter 18 verses 16 to 33 there we can see that abraham intercedes for sodom and indirectly he is interceding for lot's family because he knows that his nephew stays there and when we read uh, verses 23 and 24 it says uh, abraham approached him and say and said 
will you sweep away both the righteous and the wicked suppose you find 50 righteous people living there in the city will you still sweep away and not spare it for their sake and the lord replied if i find 50 righteous people in sodom i will spare the entire city for their sake when we read verses 32 to 33 from 50 god uh, abraham bargained uh, and he wiggled uh, down to 10 and it says uh, finally abraham said uh, lord please don't be angry with me if i speak one more time suppose only 10 were found uh, uh, 10 are found there and the lord replied uh, then i will not destroy it for the sake of the 10 when the lord had finished his conversation with abraham he went on his way and abraham returned uh, to his tent uh, remember the very first interaction that they these angels have with the inhabitant of sodom is uh, is that every single one of them the oldest man and the youngest boy were clamoring at the uh, lord's house for this man when we read genesis 19:5 it says they shouted to lord where are the men who came to spend the night with you bring them to us so that we can have sex with them where are these men that have come to you tonight uh, remember these men these uh, angels were about to go to sleep uh, and uh, they had dinner and they are ready to go they were they are ready to go to bed uh, and uh, and they were going on to their way next day and the lord was going to destroy sodom the next day but these men in the city they can't go to sleep until they have exercised uh, the wickedness in their heart uh, they can't rest uh, they stayed up at night looking for something evil to do and they are enticed by their flesh and so they come to lot's house and seek them out uh, when we read proverbs chapter 4 verse 14 it says don't do as the wicked do and don't follow the path of evil doers don't even think about it uh, don't go that way turn away and keep moving for evil people can't sleep until they have done their evil deeds for the day they can't rest until they have caused someone to stumble remember there was a relentless evil in the city of sodom my my question to you is uh, have you ever been tempted in such a way that it's hard for you to go because you feel temptation pulling at you it's hard to turn your mind off it's hard to let uh, something go for as that is a temptation that feel in this world uh, and we all go through such things uh, and lot of the temptation lot of sinful activities are done in the darkness uh, when we read ezekiel the lord tells us through the prophet ezekiel exactly what the sin of these sodomites were uh, it says uh, in ezekiel chapter 16 verses 49 and 50 it says sodom's sins were pride gluttony and laziness uh, while the poor and needy suffered outs- outside her, her door uh, she was proud and committed detestable sins uh, so i wiped her out as you have seen remember there were many sins uh, that are committed by the inhabitants of uh, sodom and gomora and it says uh, that they committed an abomination detestable sin before the lord it seems that this uh, homosexual mob uh, that was surrounding lot's house and begging and demanding these two men so that they could uh, rape them that was essentially the abomination that they were committing before the lot uh, when we read genesis 19 6 and 7 it says so lot stepped outside to talk to them shutting the door behind them please my brothers he begged uh, don't do such a wicked thing remember here lot uh, is setting himself as a barricade between the homosexual mob and the two visitors uh, that have come into this house for protection so it seems like lot has really great intentions here but look at what he does later i want to tell you something 
if lot would have stopped right there i would have said you have done a great thing he is a righteous man and uh, instead of uh, but you need to know something that great intentions don't sanctify anyone's action remember good intentions do not make your actions holy and uh, when we read verse 8 we can see what he says uh, and he says uh, look i have two virgin daughters uh, let me bring them out to you and you can do with them as you wish uh, but please leave these men alone for they are my guest and are under my protection here what lot is saying is something we cannot believe that a father uh, or is uh, tell the saying about his daughter he is ready to uh, offer his own daughters to please this mob uh, remember his intentions was to protect these two men sir uh, yet uh, he was offering his two virgin daughters to be raped mercilessly by this uh, homosexual mob outside uh, of his house uh, what was lot thinking i don't know you know when but uh, when we read leviticus 19 chapter verse 29 it says uh, do not defile your daughter by making her a prostitute or the land will be filled with prostitution and uh, wickedness uh, here we can see that lot is trying to prostitute uh, his daughters in order to appease uh, this homosexual crowd uh, you need to know something beloved you can't make bargain with evil people but that's what lot uh, uh, lot's trying to do he's trying to appease wickedness uh, instead of offering his own daughters uh, if lot would have said okay i will surrender i am coming out you do whatever you want with me but not with this uh, men or my family then i would have considered yes uh, that lot uh, is a righteous man he is sacrificing himself uh, but instead of sacrificing himself uh, he was ready to sacrifice his own daughters uh, when we read verse 9 it says stand back they shouted the fellow came to town as an outsider and now is ha- acting like our judge will treat you far worse than those other men and they launched towards lot uh, to break down the door uh, beloved be careful when people put you in leadership over them and they seem to be following you that can be a dangerous position because once you raise a voice of disagreement with uh, what the majority wants to do that position of authority can be lost pretty quickly here this people were saying indirectly hey look around us everybody in the city is here with us uh, from the youngest to the oldest uh, everybody has casted their vote to do this action and uh, who are you a sojourner a foreigner a immigrant to tell us uh, what to do we know what is right and wrong uh, and here we have all the right to do it uh, when we read psalm 36 verses 1 to 4 it says sin whispers to the wicked deep within their hearts they have no fear of god at all in their blind conceit they cannot see how wickedly they really are everything they say is crooked and deceitful they refuse to act wisely or do good uh, they lie awake at night hatching sinful plots uh, their actions are never good they make no attempt to turn from evil here you can see that people of sodom can't even see the error of their ways why because they have it set in their heart that they know right from wrong and they are absolutely blind spiritually when we read verse 10 and 11 it says but the two angels reached out and pulled lot into the house and uh, bolted the door they then they blinded all the men young and old who were at the door of the house uh, so they gave up trying to get uh, inside uh, this people are uh, spiritually blind uh, and they are deaf to exhortation and rebuke uh, so now the lord is strikes them with uh, 
physical blindness uh, and why it is not because they are blind physically it because uh, they are blind uh, uh, spiritually uh, that is the problem of this sodomites uh, they cannot see clearly they are deaf to reason they are deaf to exhortation and righteous rebuke uh, so the lord strikes them with physical blindness uh, what did the lord do when he struck them right there he sealed uh, their fate uh, the next morning when the fire began to rain down from heaven guess what they couldn't see it uh, they couldn't see it coming they couldn't make no preparation they could not run they were still in broad daylight and they would be still groping in the dark uh, remember that's what happens when you keep on living in sin many times uh, you know god seals your fate uh, because you don't want to change uh, when we read verse 12 and 13 it says meanwhile the angel questioned lot uh, do you have any relatives here in the city they asked uh, get them out of this place your son in laws sons daughters or anyone else for we are about to destroy this city completely the outcry against this place is so great it has reached the lord and he has sent us to destroy it uh, when we read verse 14 it says so lot rushed out to tell his daughter's fiances uh, quick get out of the city the lord is about to destroy it uh, but the young man thought he was only joking but the main thing here is where were his son in laws uh, they were not in his son in laws were not in the house they were out of the house uh, it says that every man in the city from old to young was outside the house uh, groping at the door uh, you know who is numbered in that lot's future son in law and these men they did nothing to protect their future wives uh, they did nothing to honor their father in law they did nothing to stand by his side they did not protect these visitors uh, they were worthless men just like the rest of them uh, so here you can see what what is happening in the in the night uh, but when we we we'll read from verse 15 and we can see from there the righteousness of god in broad uh, daylight it says verse 15 at dawn the next morning the angels become insistent uh, hurry they said to lot take your wife and your two daughters who are here get out right now or you will be swept away in the destruction of the city remember when abraham interceded for sodom what did he say uh, he say 50 and then he brought down to 10 if there were 10 righteousness righteous uh, would you spare the city surely the judge of the earth would wipe wouldn't wipe away the righteous with the wicked uh, here we can see suddenly the lord is saving four people out of sodom and that is a biggest question why let me ask you did the lord find 10 righteous in the city or did the lord find any righteous in the city and uh, when we see that lot is uh, offering his own two daughters to be raped mercilessly, mercilessly by this homosexual crowd uh, i have a hard time accepting he was a righteous man remember here we can see that lot that lord uh, is absolutely being merciful to lot and his family he is not saving four righteous people he is saving four people and he is saving four sinners uh, when we read verse 16 it says when lot uh, when lot still hesitated the angel seized his hand and uh, the hands of his wife and two daughters and rushed them to uh, and rushed them to safety outside the city for the lord was merciful here we can see here lot could see that uh, he has just seen this men st um, struck blind uh, this men are really going to destroy the city but it says uh, that lot lingered uh, or lot hesitated uh, remember mercy is when god does not give somebody someone something that they do deserve uh, what is the lord saying here 
Lord, you don't deserve to be rescued from the inhabitants of Sodom and their destruction. You deserve to be numbered with them. But the Lord is merciful, even though Lot uh, lingered. When we read verse 17 here, it says, uh, when, they were, uh, when they were safely out of the city, one of the angels ordered, run for your life and don't look back or stop anywhere in the valley. Escape to the mountains uh, and you will be swept away. Uh, uh, oh, no, my Lord, Lord begged, uh, you have been so gracious to me and saved my life and you have shown such great kindness, but I cannot go to the mountains. Uh, disaster would catch up uh, to me there and I would soon die. See, there is a small village nearby. Please let me go there. Instead, uh, don't you see how small it is? Then my life will be saved. Uh, all right, the angel said, I will grant your request. Uh, I will not destroy the little village, but hurry, escape to it, for I can do nothing until you arrive there. This exclaims, uh, explains uh, why that city was called, called Zoar, which means little place. Uh, there's a lot to learn about Lord's, uh, Lord's reasoning here with the Lord. Uh, when the Lord is calling him away from destruction, how close Lord actually wants to remain to the city of sin. He wants to be saved, uh, but he wants to be close. Uh, but when we read First uh, Corinthians 6.18, it says, Run from sexual sin. No other sin so clearly affects the body as this one does for sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. You know, when God was telling Lot to escape to the mountain, the Lord wanted to turn a city boy into a mountain man. And throughout scripture, the Lord continues, continually called his people to the mountains uh, with Abraham, who was ready to sacrifice his son in the obedience uh, to the Lord's commands. Uh, he calls us today to Mount Moriah, to the Mount of Devotion. When with the Israelites who gathered to receive the commandments, the Lord calls us to Mount Sinai, the, the Mount of Instruction. With Moses who viewed the Promised Land, he calls us to Mount Pisgah, the Mount of Vision. With Elijah, whose prayer brought down fire from heaven, he calls us to Mount Carmel, the Mount of Passion. With Peter, John and James, uh, who beheld the glory of Lord, he calls us to Mount Hermon, the Mount of Trans uh, Transfiguration. The most important mountain to which God calls us is the Mount Calvary, the mountain of the Mount of Crucifixion, of death and self. Uh, as is our tendency, Lord Lot uh, was fearful to make such a journey. Remember, beloved, God wanted to have a relationship with Lot, uh, but Lot was not spiritually sound. He, he, he sees things uh, physically and he said, no, I don't want to go there. In that, he missed uh, one of the biggest opportunity that was there in his life. Uh, remember, when God brings us such opportunity, it is very important uh, that we that we accept that uh, when we read verse 23 to 26 it says lot reached the village just as the sun was rising over the horizon then the lord rained down fire and burning sulfur from the city on sodom and gomorrah he utterly destroyed them along with the other cities and villages of the plain wiping out all the people and every bit of vegetation. But Lot's wife looked back as she was following behind him and she turned into a pillar of salt. Uh, Lot's wife looked back because she missed it. Uh, Lot's wife looked back because she longed for Sodom and Gomorrah. You know, when we read verse 27 and to 29, it says, Abraham got up early that morning and hurried out to the place where he had stood in the Lord's presence. He looked out across the plain towards Sodom and Gomorrah and watched as columns of smoke rose from the city like smoke and a furnace. Uh, 
but God listened to Abraham's request uh, and uh, kept Lot safe, uh, removing him from the disaster that engulfed the cities of the plain. Here uh, Lot was saved uh, because Abraham interceded. Uh, today you and I are alive uh, because Jesus is interceding for us in heaven. Today we, you and I are alive because there is somebody on this planet uh, who is praying for you. Your parents are praying for you. Your husband is praying for you. Wife is praying for you. Your children are praying for you. Yeah, and your grandchildren are praying for you. Don't uh, undervalue anyone. But God is working. But here we can see the five temptations uh, of this city. You know, sin told Sodom, just do what you want. Uh, and uh, that's what's the attitude of the people when we read from verses 4 to 11. Remember, sin will tell you, just do what you want. Uh, and uh, sin was telling this people, this mob, uh, these visitors came into your time. You do what you want. Uh, you uh, do what makes you feel good. Uh, beware of churches that tell you, do what you want. Uh, beware of pastors that tell you, do what you want. Uh, the second uh, sin was telling the son-in-laws, uh, just don't uh, worry about it. Uh, remember, sin will tell you, don't worry about it. Uh, here we can see when we read verse 12 to 14 that Lord uh, was said to his son-in-laws to get out uh, because Lord is about to destroy the cities. Uh, and what did they do? They laughed at him because to them it seems to him that uh, it's uh, that he is joking. Sin will tell you just don't worry about it. Uh, you can continue to get drunk. Uh, you can continue to you can continue to be addicted to pornography. You can continue in that affair. You can continue in that wrong relationship. Uh, just don't worry about it. Uh, remember, you have to be very careful if you are living a life where you don't worry about things and you're living a sinful life. Uh, sin told uh, Lot uh, just a little while longer remember sin will tell you that just a little while longer when the angels warned him but uh, but the lord lingered uh, and sin was telling him that you can hold on to sodom you can hold on hold on to your old way of life uh, and you can hold on to your sin just a little while longer remember when you know that you are doing wrong and you want to delay things, remember sin is speaking to you, devil is speaking to you and he is wanting to destroy your life. Sin told Lot's wife, just one more look. Remember sin will tell you, just one more look. Just one more look as you are fleeing destruction. You are almost there and, uh, and you are almost... Uh, uh, reach the deliverance uh, and uh, the devil will say just one more look when God tells you not to do it is for your betterment uh, but uh, Lord's wife she, uh, she was reaching the place of deliverance uh, but uh, the sin said just one time you look back and she heard uh, and she became into a pillar of salt uh, remember beloved sin told Lot just a little closer and same thing sin will tell you just a little bit closer the lord says to lord flee to the mountains uh, and lord says i can't make it to the mountains uh, there is a small village nearby uh, instead of going to the mountains uh, can i go there so my life will be saved uh, remember you don't need to advise god when god tells you something just do it uh, and you will witness the hand of god in your life uh, remember uh, when we read verse 15 verse 17 19 20 when we read verse 15 and 16 17 and verse 29 there we can see that god calls uh, god gives a call to his people he says get up now get out now don't wait any longer don't turn around uh, find the lord's favor in god's chosen person or chosen man remember god is calling you today to get out uh, get up now and don't wait any longer uh, don't turn around follow me and listen to me so the main question comes is why did the lord rescue lord rescued lot uh, when we read verse 29 it says 
the god had listened to abraham's request and kept lot safe removing him from the disasters that engulfed the cities of the plain remember beloved god saved lot because he remembered the man of god's choosing he remembered the man whom god had blessed in this sense abraham serves as a type of christ abraham serves as the as a savior for lot the lord saved lot because he remembered the righteousness of abraham the lord saved lot because he remembered his covenant and that he had made to abraham god remembered the promises that he has made to abraham he promised to bless the world through abraham and so now he saves lot because of abraham remember today if you are alive don't think it's because of your spirituality because you're fasting and praying it's all because of jesus and he is interceding for you and remember that we should never get fall in the hands of god it is dreadful to fall in the hands of god and i have experienced that and it's not good uh, but what is what we can come out of it uh, come off uh, come out of this message what we can get out of this message uh, is that how we can escape from the judgment of god we have to obedient to his word and we have to live a righteous life a holy life uh, and uh, when issues come out in life when there is disagreement uh, instead of uh, leaving and separating try to find out to stay closer with your beloved sir uh, and uh, and instead of uh, taking decisions uh, let's looking at the things physically you should see uh, take decisions uh, looking at the things uh, uh, spiritually that is very very important uh, remember beloved we have only one life and we have to make it count for the lord uh, i hope uh, and i believe this message has blessed you let us pray father god we come to thy presence in this wonderful time master lord we come to your throne of grace i give you children into thy hand their life into thy hand lord uh, thank you for giving me the wisdom and knowledge strength and courage to share there to share your word master you i believe lord that you have spoken to your children master no plan of the devil no plan of the evil one prevail master all the plans of the devil i cancel it in the name of jesus lord let your will be established in their life master all the plan and purpose that you kept for them is for their good and not for their harm for that i thank you masters lord every person that is watching me master lord if they are about to take a wrong decision in their life like lot master lord give them with the wisdom and knowledge master to understand to stay closer to the godly people and the godly families and the godly uh, church that you have kept them uh, near them master may they understand the value of that and master may they not run after the wealth of this world after the things of this world uh, but they run after the righteousness of god uh, to run after the things of the of of you master Lord, you're doing it for that. I thank you. Heal them, Master. Deliver them, Master. Let your will be established in their life, Master. No plan of the devil, no plan of the evil one prevail, Master. Every wrong actions that they have taken when they listen to to sin, Master. Lord, forgive them, Master. Heal them, Master. Let your will be established in their life, Master. All the plans of the devil, all the plans of the evil one, I cancel it right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, you're doing it for that. I thank you. Abba, you're doing it for that. I thank you. I bless your children master may they witness their your hand uh, lord uh, and deliver them from the plans of the devil master every addiction every wrong connections be destroyed uh, and uh, lord you let your will be done in their life master as lord you're doing it for that i thank you in jesus precious name we pray amen 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 I believe this message has blessed you. If this message has blessed you, see to it that you share this message with your friends and loved ones. And if you're using an Android phone or an Apple phone, you can download my app. App name is Evans Francis. If the Lord leads you, become a pillar of fire or a pillar of cloud of our small ministry. The links are there in the description below. You can get my email address, my WhatsApp number in the description. Feel free to get in touch with us and other information. You can get it in the description below. And uh, if you 
haven't subscribed to this channel do subscribe hit the bell icon so whenever i come live i share a video or a post a dream from the lord or a vision from the lord you will be notified uh, do like this video so that it can reach more people out there may god bless you may his face shine upon you stay blessed shalom Thank you.